Okay, let's look at the substitution method. So this method is for solving recurrences and it comprises two steps. First, we need to guess the form of the solution. We need to have a good guess. And we use mathematical induction to find the constants and show that our solution works, our guess works, okay? So the name substitution comes from the step that we we need to substitute the guessed solution for the function when applying the inductive hypothesis to smaller values. We'll see how that will be like, okay? And it is a powerful method, but still we need to have some guess at first. So taking this example, the uh, recurrence from maximum subarray algorithm and merge sorts, okay? And we put some uh, the flooring uh, the flooring symbols here, the flooring uh, operators here to show uh, how uh, to to use a bit more difficult case instead of the simplest case. Okay, and we are not requiring n to be the power of two. Okay, and here remember in the previous case uh, we said it's a uh, big theta of n, right? So we use a more specific function instead of big theta of n uh, in order to make this whole uh, mathematical induction work. All right, so, and we, what we need to prove is to use the upper bound, the big O case, okay? Our guess is that the big theta of n should be big O of n times logarithm of n, okay? And this guess is purely from experience because we have, say that we have experienced that the merge sort has big O of big theta of n times logarithm of n. So we guess that, okay, this one could be big O of n times logarithm of n too, okay? All right, so according to the definition of big O uh, notation uh, uh, from the previous lecture, right? We, in the growth of function lecture, we have, uh, we have already seen that the uh, um, definition of big O is that we need to find some constant C and some N zero so that for any Ns that's greater than N zero, the inequality should always hold, okay? The T of N should be bounded by C times N times logarithm of N, okay? That's the definition of big O notation. And we start by assuming that this bound holds for all positive um, m's in which m is smaller than n. In particular, we assume that this assumption, this inequality should hold for n over two to the floor. Yeah, that's how we conduct the first step. Okay, so this will give us, right, T of n over two to floor should be smaller than C times this, this value and times logarithm of this value. So this is purely from substitute. Substituting the n with n over two to floor will result in this new inequality, okay? And, and we substitute this into the recurrence, right? Right, because this one, T of n over two is smaller than this one. So we need to re substitute back into the original recurrence. So we will have something very interesting here. After substitution, we will have T of n should be less than or equal to two times C times log, uh, C times this one, the smaller value and the logarithm of this smaller value plus n. Right, that's uh, the results of, of, of conducting the substitution. All right, next, we remove the floors because the floored values is always less than or smaller than the original value. So we have one more less than or equal to uh, inequality here, okay? And here we, is just uh, some um, expansion, okay? because the logarithm of n divide two 
is can be expanded by uh, two into the logarithm of n minus the logarithm of two. Okay, so that's something we uh, know from mathematics here. And because logarithm of two is a constant one, right? So the whole thing becomes c times n of logarithm n plus one minus c times n, right? So t of n is less than or equal to this whole thing on the right, right? So remember our goal, our goal is to show that t of n is bounded by c times n times logarithm of n, right? That's something we wish to find, right? And in order to keep this, in order to make this inequality valid, right? That's something we wanna see. We just need this one to be negative, right? As long as, okay, let me use another color. So as long as this one is negative, then this inequality is always true, right? So we should choose the C that's greater than one, right? So our proof is almost done. We have done the first step. That step is to say that, is to find the constant C that make the substitution work, okay? the t of n is smaller than c times n times logarithm of n. This inequality holds as long as c is greater than one, okay? So this is a, the first step of, of, of our uh, instruction um, because we start from uh, the, we start from the smaller, uh, smaller value, right? We start from a smaller value here, n over two, uh, n over two. We should basically show that as long as the smaller value is true to hold this inequality, the bigger value always ho also holds, right? This is the mathematical induction where mathematical induction happens. This step always holds. Okay, so we have proven that if the smaller case holds, then the original case also holds. And the second step is to prove that the equality holds for some specific boundary conditions, right? Um, for example, the st w w that is to find the starting points of the induction. Okay? So what about the base case, n equals one? But in this case, unfortunately, the base case, the inequality doesn't hold, right? It violates the solution. We want the value on the left to be less than or equal to the right. But in this case, one is greater than zero here. So we need to consider a different boundary condition, right? We can um, choose um, because by observing the uh, recurrence, right, um, a recurrence does not directly depend on T1, right? We can use bigger values. For example, T4 is two times T2 plus four, and T3 uh, uh, is two times uh, T3 over two to the floor plus three, which is two times T1 plus three, right? So we can uh, consider uh, n equals two and n equals three as the boundary condition because we don't want to use n equals one. Right? N equals one is a not is an invalid uh, base case. So uh, we do the calculation. We find that t two equals four and t three equals five. So we want the base case to be true, right? We want four to be smaller than. Uh, be smaller than or equal to two c times two times logarithm of two, and we want t three to be less than or equal to three uh, c times three times logarithm of three. As long as these two equations uh, inequalities hold, the boundary is proven, right? So we can simply choose the c's that are greater than two, 
create, we can choose any value that's, that, may, that is greater than two, okay? So for all n that's greater than three, so the three is our n zero now. We don't use one to be our n zero. For any three that's greater than three, uh, any n that's greater than three, we have this inequality holds, right? Uh, with the choice of, uh, so here is a typo. Let me quickly uh, remove it because our condition uh, is different now. The boundary condition is two. Okay. So uh, let me start sharing the screen. All right, so here, we first have shown that um, if we choose uh, C that's greater than one, the mathematical induction will work, right? And we also show that we need to choose three C that's greater than two in order to make the uh, boundary case work. So in the final proof, we need to choose an N zero that's two, okay? And uh, the C is greater than two. So we're done, right? We have basically two steps. The um, First step is to in, is to do the mathematical induction from smaller value to a greater value, okay? And the second is to find the boundary case. And we need to choose a C that makes the uh, inequality holds and the proper N zeros. There are several steps for using a substitution method. So first of all, there's no, because there's no general way to guess the correct solutions to recurrences, we basically uh, need to use some other ways like drawing the recursion trees to help us get some guess, to get some clues, right? So if a recurrence is similar to the one we met before, then we can simply guess a similar solution. In example here, if we met a recurrence in this form, T of N equals two times square uh, parenthesis, not, not square, but parenthesis, two n over two plus 13, uh, plus 17, there's some constant here, okay? But we know that the constant is not a determinant factor, right? So we, it's, it's quite similar to n over two. So we can simply guess these uh, recurrences should have a big O of n times log n of n as well, okay? And some other tip mm -hmm. is like, Sometimes our guess could be not strong enough, right? We can revise the guess by subtracting a lower order term. So for example, in the T of N equals T of N over two uh, to the floor plus N of N over two to the cell plus one. If we guess the solution to be T of N equals big O, big o of N, uh, big O of N, then we substitute into the guess, we will have that, right? Uh, T of n should be less than or greater, uh, less than or equal to C times n over two to the floor plus C times n over two to the cell plus one, which give us C times n plus one, right? But we cannot, we can never make this inequality valid, uh, valid right? Um, here, it really should be C here. Uh, let me play the slide again. So it really should be uh, the 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 get the solution could never uh, be valid for any choice of C, right? Because it's uh, C times N plus uh, one, right? So we can uh, modify our original guess by switching to a um, 
um, by subtracting some lower order term, we can use this. Uh, we can use this term. We can use this uh, new guess, right? Whenever d uh, is a positive number, so now we should have a different uh, substitution result, right? We substitute that uh, new guess into the solution. We will have something like this and this and this. So now this one can be a can be a negative number. Right, as long as d is greater enough, as long as d is greater than uh, 0.5, then we can have, as long as, um, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it should be, uh, the inequality should hold, this inequality should hold as long as d is greater than one. So this minusing some uh, lower order term trick is quite useful in obtaining the correct proof. So that's some practical uh, guide in uh, in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in using the substitution method. Okay, uh, but still it is a it is a tricky one. We 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 need to have some already have some solution in our mind, and we use substitute, we substitute the solution into the into the recurrence equation.